Unscripted, unshackled, uncooped. What you're about to hear is for more mature audiences only. It's Miguel and Holly Uncensored. Hey, girl. How you doing this morning, oh, this hey, afternoon, hey, or this Miss evening? Mama. Yeah, oh. whenever you listen. Hey, you know what I'd like to know? Yeah. When do you listen to the podcast? Uh, like, I just saw... I'm trying to think of the fan member I saw on Instagram. They had us. My brain is like slipping today. I do apologize. But I saw them on Instagram, their Instagram story, and they were watching the YouTube channel. Uh, it was like later in the afternoon, and they had us up watching the podcast. I was like, oh, hey, how you doing? So I'm always so curious. When do you listen to Miguel and Holly Uncensored? Uh, text hits. And what time you listen and send that to 96893. But also check out our other podcasts like Miguel and Holly Full Show, Miguel and Holly Am I the A-Hole, Miguel and Holly Blown Off, all the other podcasts. Also, Queen City Confessions. Because remember, we got to get to that confession that I could not read on the air this morning. Oh, my God. See, I was so mad at the time. And I'm like, how are you going to make me wait? And then I promptly forgot about it. So Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. did you just remember now? Yes. When no. he said it. Oh, Miguel. Oh, me? Oh, no, I haven't pulled up. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that's why oh, I was I, leading I, I into I totally forgot about confessions. It. Oh, I never well, forget well, anything. Well. It's true. Nah, I forget most. Yes, you got a book. <laughs> I got a book. Mm -hmm. Um. So here's the podcast this morning. Or the podcast. Here is the confession. <laughs> We're having a rough time today. We are. Like, my words are just... I feel like I have a lot to do still, and I'm just thinking about it. But yeah. also, there's other things that I was like, I should throw this in the podcast, so I made notes, but whatever. All right. Hey, Focus. let's let's let, let's do this. Focus. The three of us. Yeah. I'm going to count to three. We're going to... Kelvin's yawning. <laughs> Go ahead, girl. I'm good. Get I'm it ready. out. <laughs> We're all <is> yawning now. <laughs> Well, it's like, you know, someone else makes you yawn. Mm -hmm. That means you have a lot of empathy. Uh, I have none. So I was like, where's your yawn at? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> okay, on the count of three, we're all going to take a deep breath, like truly inhale and then exhale, okay? I'm stand and everybody too. listening, too. Yeah, absolutely. Because yeah. sometimes you, this is the one thing, not to bring up someone from the past, but Scotty the Body, our old producer, he used to annoy me because in the morning before the show, he'd be like... <laughs> <sighs> yeah, it was a heavy breather, <sighs> and I'd be like, "What the fuck? It's four forty-five. He was to yell at him so bad in the mornings, and God bless him, he would just like that expression never change. He'd be like, "Hey, <laughs> like, you're just being so it's just a little disagreeable. It's like you're just silly, and I'm just like being so crazy. I'm angry. I, I think you're just hungry, my guy. Do you need a, Do you need an energy shake or something? Like yes." <laughs> Uh, so we're gonna take a page from his book, okay? Okay. Okay. Here we go. On the count of three. Yeah. One, two, three. Let your shoulders drop. Relax your jaw, and we are focused. Focus. We are here in this podcast. Nothing doing else matters. The podcast. Nothing else matters. We are just here with each other and you, and we're doing it. All right. Got it. We're I'm good. In. I'm here. Yep. We're in. We're focused. Mm -hmm. I'm right here. All right. I'm in the universe. Well, now let's get to this uncensored Miguel and Holly Queen City confession. Oh, I love confessions. All right. Here it is from this morning that we couldn't read. I have the best boyfriend in the world. We've been together for five years, and I know he will be the best father and husband when we get to that point. There's only one problem that I've been trying to work through, but I just don't know if I can get over it. He has a small penis. It's small in length and girth. But you've been there for five years. Yeah, girl. If it was that big of a problem, wouldn't you have dipped out, like, right off the bat? Is she thinking about cheating? Um, Is she? Someone sent her a big pig. <sighs> so, I've been with someone. This is obviously adult conversation. Yeah. Clearly. Okay. Um, <laughs> who... Yes. N-S-F-W. Right? Who had a small member. Sure. Oh. And we tried to work through it. And, you know... um. 
bought things that could help in that department. Mm -hmm. So there are things you can do to work past it if you want to. Now, ultimately, that was not why the relationship didn't work. But at the time, I was really into this person, into their soul, into the conversation, into the friendship that turned into a relationship. And so I was willing to work through it with them. Yeah. So I think that if you are willing to work through it, you can if you want to. Right. But if you're not willing to and you're always going to be thinking about that, then it's not going to work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I have a, a couple things. Number one, and first of all, there are things that you can do. Like, I'm pretty sure they make like penile extenders. Yes, that's what we used. Right? Like, yes. that's a real thing. Mm -hmm. Um, But it depends on how open you are about your sex life, which, by the way, I really encourage you, any of anybody listening, to be open about your sex life with your partner because you're choosing each other to go through life together right what like think about why you're uncomfortable bringing things up to this person this is supposed to be your ride or die right mm -hmm. um and i know it's uncomfortable because in america like who we don't talk about sex it's taboo but like you you're gonna have if you want this person to be a husband and a father you're gonna have to have some uncomfortable conversations and I get it because there is such a fucking stigma about dick size and guys. But like, I wish there wasn't, but I get that there is. So, yeah, you may have to bring this up delicately. Like, I'm sure he knows that he's got a small dick. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you've been together for five years, so it's not like that big of a hurdle. But at the same time... If you can't talk about it open and openly and honestly with him, I think that's a bit of a red flag in the relationship because he's got to be willing to at least take a, a look at your sexual needs and wants and things like that. Um, and if he can get over his, I don't know if it would be embarrassment. There's really nothing to be embarrassed about. That's how you were born. Like, I don't know if you have to get over some kind of like shame or embarrassment or that thing that guys get where they don't want to talk about it because they're too much of a dude. I don't know. Like you're, he's going to, you're going to have to break that wall and then you can probably talk about it and figure it out. The other part of this thing is like, okay, so maybe y'all are very young. Um, but like five years is a long time to be together without any talk of marriage or kids. So where are we at with that? Mm. Like if you want, a husband and kids, why hasn't it come up in the last five years? Unless you're very young. Like, maybe you're only, like, 22 or something and you've been together since you were teenagers. I don't know. But I'm just thinking, in my head, if you're, like, mid to late 20s, like, we're getting to that time where you need to be talking about these things. Like, if it just feels like a lot is being unsaid, that's what I'm saying. I think everything you said was right, Holly, but like in a perfect world, I, I don't see how this person is clearly they're not comfortable enough to go this route because I I don't think I could ever tell somebody like, hey, I love you, but you're not satisfying me because of your penis. Um, so for me, I think that's super difficult. I think if you want to go a different route, I would suggest maybe some couples therapy. Maybe where you feel like there's a mediator that's neutral mm -hmm. where you can have open discussion about it. Because what it, what this sounds like to me, if you have to go to a radio station to say this, like, we're always going to promote communication and be open about it. And you're right. It, there is a little red flaggy about like, hey, you've been together for five years. Why can't you bring this up? Clearly, they can't. Right. It's just so uncomfortable to say that. I Even myself, like, I'm, I'm not going to say that I've always had incredible conversations regarding to sex, like with my fiance or any partners in the past, for example, it's not always been easy, even though we have had a past. Um, but I agree that, I mean, the uncomfortable conversation has to happen, whether you like it or not, maybe it's not going to be face to face one-on-one -on -one. try the therapy route. Yeah. Therapy might be good because Miguel, sex remind therapy. Me, se yes. That there are sex therapists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, because there's always a problem rooted somewhere. We had gone to a sex therapist. Was it a sex therapist or just a couples therapist? Might have been a sex therapist. I have a weird backstory with all this, though. But 
um, the sex therapist can help you get you talking about, you know, both of your individual issues. Um, but you have to also know about your individual issues in order to talk about them. Right. So that mm. can be a bit of a barrier. Um, what was the end of the thing, Miguel? What was the like the query at the end? It just said it's small and then thin girth. But they said there's only one problem that I've been trying to work through that I just don't know if I can get over it. He just has a small okay, that's penis. It. I just don't know if I can get over it. So the thing is, like, are you thinking about breaking up with this man because of this? That's what if, it sounds like. If that's the case, <clears throat> you have nothing to lose by bringing it up. Right. Either that's yeah, true. Either you're going to break up with this man because of this issue anyway, or you just say, fuck it. Let's talk about this. And then he gets mad, and then you get mad, and then you have a breakup. But you were already thinking about breaking up. Yeah. So what do you have to lose? I guess that would be the... To me, I always feel like in relationships, and especially when you're talking about someone that you are choosing to be with for the rest of your life, if they don't know how to have these type of conversations that you want to talk about, then that person is not for you. So if you're a person, if this is really important to you, and you're like, I really want to figure out a solution and I want to have this tough conversation. If they shut you down, then that means this, pro this person probably isn't going to have more tough conversations. So what happens, you know, if y'all are talking about someone getting a job and moving far away, or if y'all are going through financial troubles or if mm. someone loses a job, like to me, these sort of things are bellwether for how that person copes in difficult situations because life and marriage is not always, you know, fun lunches and sexy time and doing exciting things. It's navigating tough decisions together and yeah. figuring out, okay, you take that side of it. I'll take this side of it. And so to me, if you can't have that tough conversation, then I don't think that this person is for you, even though they're a nice person. And that's the thing. And that's something that I always had a problem with because there were a couple guys that I didn't want to be with but I always felt conflicted because I'm like, but they're so nice and they're so friendly and they're a hard worker and I can see that they're going to be a great person. But that person wasn't for me. And that's OK. And let me give another perspective, because I do agree with what you're saying. But sometimes it might not be the other person. Like, yes, if the if you try to bring it up to that person and they shut you down. Yes, that might not be the person for you. Agreed. But it sounds like our confessor can't even bring it to the other person. And that's on you because I have, and I'm still working on this. I've recognized this about myself for years now, and I'm still struggling with breaking news to my fiance when I know it's something that's going to trigger him because I get triggered when he's triggered because mm -hmm. I don't like confrontation. I, I was never given skills or trained in how to have a, a productive and um, healthy argument or disagreement with someone. In my mind, if we're having a disagreement, I am uncomfortable in my body. I'm tense. My stomach doesn't feel good. I am stressed out because uh, of those tendencies for me to not want to upset other people. I'm upsetting myself. and so. I really, I, I've been working on it, but it's still hard that I know when I have to bring up something that's going to make him uncomfortable, it takes me a while. And I'm like, oh, God. And sometimes I don't know how to do it. And then that leads to usually me just like getting stressed out. And then finally, over time, he's like, what's going on? And then I blurt some shit out. <laughs> and then I'm like, I was thinking about this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like... God. You, you, would the think hill. Be, you would think I'd be better at this by now. But like, so for our confessor, it might be some work that you have to do on yourself because you got to do it. You have to have these uncomfortable conversations like they're not comfortable. They are so uncomfortable for me every time, every time. But somehow up until this point, my fiance and I have managed to muddle through the uncomfortable conversations. It does get a little bit easier every time. Not a lot, because obviously I still struggle. 
But every time we do it, and then I realize that he's had a safe reaction to whatever I thought was going to burn the house down, I'm like, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Look, look at that. We had a conversation. We did it. And then usually we both agree because it can be tough. And then he'll get heated and then I get heated. And then, uh, but then usually like we get through it and we have the healthy disagreement. And then we almost like high five each other at the end. And he's like, look at that. We had a really tough conversation. And I'm really glad that we did because I feel better. And I'm like, I know me too. I'm just providing some context to you. Kelvin, it feels like you are good at not minding having difficult conversations with people um because i've seen you in several different circumstances in situations where i would just be like well it is what it is girl i'm not wading down those waters but you will go for it is that something that you just saw growing up or something that you learned to do over time i think it depends per the situation i think we had a, a caller earlier today and she had said how she caught her person cheating and she was like, whenever something bothers me, I have to say it immediately. I can't hold it in. And that's truly my personality to the T. Um, I, it doesn't favor me uh, in certain situations. Uh, there are times where I wish I could hold back and not say how I'm truly feeling for, uh, I don't know, better advantages in certain situations, maybe at work, maybe with relationships. Um, so, uh, I don't know really where I learned that. I just know internally I, I get more and more anxious when I'm holding something in. Hmm. And for me, what I've learned through therapy is to try to practice what I'm going to say and lead with my emotion and not lead with some sort of passive aggressiveness. Hmm. Uh, so for me, I've learned that like it's just not good for me to hold it in. I don't feel good in internally, mentally. So I always oh, have to me neither, get but, it off but my chest. I, I will just absolutely send myself into an absolute death spiral in order to avoid. I can't avoid it because there's two options. It's avoid it and build it and continually damage myself for, yes. and feel I'm bad. I'm really good at damaging myself. <laughs> <laughs> or I let it out. We can talk through it. We don't go to bed angry. We move on. And I personally, I, I that's my route. I'd rather do that. So if... Let's say I told you something or did something that you didn't like, that you deeply, not less just like playing around, but you felt offended. Like, I know for you, something that, like, if I just turned your mic off in the middle of a segment, you know, and I was just like, you know, um, we're running out of time. Your story was too long. I turned your mic off. Holly did the tease and we had to move on. And literally, I didn't even think twice about it and we kept moving on. Walk me through like the rest of the show and the day, what happens in your mind, you know, where you would have to say something. Because in me, I'd be like, okay, well, that was that one time he, you know, we were running out of time. I'm offended, but whatever, I'll move on. That's how I, my, my brain works. And I just sort of like, it comes in and it happens and I spit it out and I'm moving on to the next day. How did, how does your brain work for like how you're feeling the rest of the day? I, I will feel heat in my stomach or in my chest and i will um it, like i said it depends it really truly depends per situation but for me i i will start getting angry internally and then i start thinking okay well why would he do that what like what was the point of that let me try to rationalize before i i not attack, but you know what I mean? Like I, I confront you about it. Mm. Um, but there's been certain situations, not too many, but there's been certain situations where I feel like I've gone up to you guys and been like, Hey, I wasn't really happy about this and how this happened. Um, and I'd really just like your opinion on it. And I feel like that's, that's my route. Mm. That's my route. But yeah, I, that's how it is initially. Initially, I'm just like angry. I'm quiet. I'm a little reserved for a little bit because I'm thinking it over in my mind. Mm -hmm. And then once I've rationalized, okay, this is what I want to share. This is how I want to express it. Then I'm ready to do the confrontation. But there is that moment of like, <sighs> okay. mm. let me collect my thoughts. It's and so interesting how people deal with it. Like, I think I've learned the older that I've gotten that I, and I'm trying to think of situations where this has happened recently. And I'm thinking with our previous boss here, um, daddy aj where he sent us a couple of like emails that morning um and then there was like one that i was just like what the actual fuck is going on yes. where like my initial reaction is like i'm pissed 
But then I feel like this is where I go back to my conflict resolution classes from middle school where I was a conflict manager. I where about that. Oh, right? They use it every damn thing. <laughs> Everything. Yes. But I feel like that course taught me so much about people, even though we were so young. And one thing that I always stick to is especially in that sense where, like, he wasn't mad at us. It was just the tone of his messages were really different than what they normally are. And I was mm -hmm. like, something is going on. So instead of marching into his office and being like, how dare you send us that fucking email during the show? Oh, my God, I'm so fucking pissed. I was like, I closed the door and I was like, hey, can we have a moment where, like, you're not boss. I'm not employee. Are you OK? What's going on? And he sort of was like, well, there's some things stressing me out. And I was like, OK. Because the tone of your email was way more aggressive than what it normally is. And he was like, oh, I didn't mean that. I was just in the middle of like five things and I was just pissed. And I was like, okay, got it. And so I feel like that's how I always approach situations where I'm not like, oh, God, what did I do? It's more so like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong with you? What's your problem? <laughs> I mean, no, I always, Damn, I, I thought always, that, was get, that was becoming so inspirational that it became. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you, bitch? What? But it's actually kind of good to do that because I always assume that it's me, right? Yeah, I always right. assume that it is, it is me, or um, I also don't want to make another person feel uncomfortable. Like, so that's another reason why I'm not going to really bring things up to people because. I know what I feel like if someone is like, I just don't want to cause other people discomfort. And like, I do work on my people pleasing tendencies because I know it's not about pleasing. It's actually about controlling and it's manipulative. And once I learned that a few years ago, um, I try to catch myself because I'm not trying to please the other person. I'm trying to manipulate the situation so that I don't have to feel discomfort and they're not feeling discomfort. And that's where it comes from. Um, <clears throat> Cause I don't handle it well. And so I really try, I'm like, I, I'm not trying to be manipulative, but I also don't know how to handle myself in a, like, if the other person were to fire back at me and become upset, that's where I fall apart. Mm. I don't have good, like, if I'm, I'm trying to think, it's not all the time, because, like, for example, my fiance and I have had some fights where I'm like, no, it's this, this, like, I will stand up. But if it's a work situation or if it's with someone I don't know very well, or even if it's someone that I do know very well, but like, I don't know. I, I, if I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't really like how you spoke to me. And they're like, well, you took it wrong. I didn't like, you took it wrong. Like I, that's not even what I meant. I'd be like, oh, it's fine. But I would just still, it still, it made me feel uncomfortable. And they were like, well, I don't like, I don't know in my head, like somehow we start having an argument and I, that is the feeling that I, I mm. oh, oh God, my, my, I would cry. Like, cause I, there's, I don't know how to frustration feel those feelings without having a body sensation. Yes. I think it's frustration. And like my body literally doesn't know how to handle it to make my mouth work to say what I'm trying to say. And I just cry. So there's some complex things going on. There's something that I really have learned from the two of you is that whenever something is presented, you guys immediately do not judge and you try to like see something positive or you do it at the end either way, but you, you guys either do it in the beginning or at the end. And that's something that I want to work on and ha I have been, but I'm not the best at it. I very much am ready to blame. And that's something I don't like about me because it doesn't put me with a peace of mind to start with. Mm. So that's something that I really uh, enjoy mm. about the two of you. Mm. That's where, because Miguel and I learned a few years back, because we used to say we were like the same person. And that's one of the ways that in which we're the same. I think our upbringing and just the the type of person that we are right. and uh, the, the way that our brains kind of work to put ourselves in other people's shoes mm -hmm. that's where that comes from that's where we're like the same where we're like okay you just imparted a lot let me think <laughs> about this you know yeah. because instead of just jumping to a conclusion and judging we're both of the mindset of like let's get to the actual bottom of this and i think it comes from a deep seated place of empathy and putting ourselves in other people's shoes 
Um, even though we have a lot of differences too, that we've, you know, made big strides in figuring them out so that we wouldn't be a lame morning show. <laughs> um, that's one of the things that I think we do really well in tandem. So thank you for that compliment. Mm -hmm. And it really does help to lead with curiosity instead right. of judgment. Yes. Right. Right. I was raised by a bunch of beasts. So for <laughs> me, that's always my go-to because mm. that's what I, that's all I've ever known. Well, mm. that's why I think that's, that's part of this thing where you're like, you start to feel uncomfortable. So you have to say it. Right. I think it has a lot to do with your upbringing. And because even your family now, within the last couple of days, we've heard stories about how you are literally shooting off mean tinged text messages to family members and i'm like i would never <laughs> like right but that's commonplace and so you're okay with that form of communication i guess you were raised that Whoa. way yeah yeah because i feel like in my case like my grandmother was a because i had like two different examples in my life and depending upon the situation you can see both sides come out where like my grandmother was just a very meek and quiet person, and she was a listener. She didn't talk a whole lot. She didn't say many words. When she did, she chose her words very carefully, but she was a big, big listener. Whereas my mom, you've had her on a podcast. She shoots off the hip. She loses. She has a very, very short fuse, um, and she gets very angry, and she's a shoot first, ask questions later. So I feel like the majority of my... um uh, personality is like my grandmother where I'm, I will listen and I have so much patience and I am kind and empathetic and I want to help you be the best person you can be. But then every now and then <laughs> my mama, Angela Jackson comes out. Yeah. And, that's where we get different. Right. And that's where I'm willing to just lash out. But like, it has to be at the very very end of my rope and it's only happened a couple of times a few times in my adult life where y'all almost saw it with abe and that tattoo um oh, I saw, like, you, saw your <laughs> like, you could see like the, the flip face. you could see you you literally became that person like yes. the hulk came out right like i literally went from lydia cole my grandma to i it was a quick flip to angela jackson my mom yes. where i was like what the actual fuck are you doing Cause, and you you because you got you got real serious you were like what the fuck <laughs> it was like another person came in like you ever seen that movie was that where like the, the guy's got a lot of personalities it's like a horror movie i'm split. not sure oh, split yes split. angela took the light yes <laughs> okay that version of you took the light and the mild nice empathetic person just went back to a corner and was like that's yep. not my rodeo nope 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 Yep. Yeah. And that ab absolutely. So that's why I always say like, I can be several of those things. Um, there was a roommate we had back in the day in Tampa, uh, who a lot of times people were like, Miguel, he's using you. Uh, he's taking advantage of your patience and your hospitality. And he was our roommate for a long while. And then he did something that was unforgivable. And like, that's when I lost my shit. Mm. Um, because there were several things leading up to that. But like one of the times where I lost it, you know, it's like everyone has a trigger. Yeah. And for me, um, obviously we do, we're, you know, in the public eye. And so I'm all about presentation. And as a black gay man, I know that sometimes the spotlight can be a little harsher on the things that I do. And so I go through a lot of pains to make sure that people see my best side. Well, this roommate had left a bunch of cigarette butts um, outside of his balcony and my townhouse and the HOA came to the door and they're like, Hey, Miguel, you know, we know that it's not you. We know who lives back there in that side of your townhouse, but there's like a pile of cigarette butts and the HOA are about to do a walk around and they're going to probably find you. And like in that moment, I was just a black man with two older white people being like, in my, this is just a trigger you irresponsible little black boy who think you can just buy a townhouse in our neighborhood and move here. But clearly you can't be here because you don't know what to fucking do and how to follow the rules. That's a trigger that it set off on me. And mm. so when I called him, I, our other roommate was like, I have never seen fury and anger. Like it came out of your voice in that moment, because I don't like to be embarrassed. I don't like to feel shame. 
um, because I'm like, I do everything that I can do to like put my best foot forward, especially in that sort of home living situation. And you just fucking said, well, fuck you, Miguel. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to just do whatever I want. And so in that moment, the split happened and Angela came roaring through the phone and I literally made him leave work and come home to clean it up because I was like, you will not live in this house and embarrass me like that. And so that's why it's just certain triggers happened where the patience just goes right out the window. Mm -hmm. Uh, We got a text from Vanessa in Lakeland that said, I'm just like Kelvin, but instead of feeling a heat, I start fidgeting and getting worked up until I finally say something. I have to say something to someone almost immediately. And if I don't, I will be restless. Even if what I say causes more problems or doesn't fix the situation, I have to speak my mind. And I got that from not having many opportunities as a child to speak my mind. And now as an adult, I have to or it will fester. That part. Yeah, I was so dismissed as a child. And it was always two versus one. My mom and dad always on the same page. There was never a moment where I could go to my dad about something and be like, yeah, your mom is a little overreacting. No, it was always two versus one. However I felt about something, it didn't really matter. I was just a kid who didn't pay bills. There was never no check-ins about how I felt about something or if my opinion mattered. And I guess that manifested now as an adult where, like, I want you to know how I feel. This is how I feel. I need to be heard. So bizarre. Because same, my opinion didn't matter in in my house. Like, I could... I could probably say it, but I learned pretty quickly. Like you learn your parents as you grow and they grow. Like it's not going to matter really. Like if she has decided something, she's she's like, there's no fighting it. And so, but it turned me the opposite where I'm just like, what I have to say doesn't matter. So it's not going to matter. So I'm just going to sit here. But also I wasn't allowed to get mad. And I think maybe, did you ever like yell at them or were you allowed to yell at them or anything? I We never got into yelling matches, but I definitely was the one who had the more privilege. I was the baby and I was also the boy. And I was their their only baby together. And mm, they had right, me right. by the time that everybody was out of the house already and they were already adults. So I for sure grew up with more privilege than my older brothers and sisters. I'm just curious because like, and I've been, I've been thinking about this recently, where um, I remember I probably got into those like emo- emotional hormonal puberty driven teen years and my mom I was like you know lit up about something and I I was yelling at my mom and I remember oh god I remember when her voice would get low and she did that mom yell she'd be like you never like oh she sounded like a demon she was like you never take that tone of voice with me you never yell." and I was just like so I just took all my rage and I put it into like a little cube and then I just went upstairs. So any other time I would feel myself getting mad, I've been told already, I'm not allowed to yell at her. I'm not allowed to have emotional reactions to what she says. And my stepdad was such a fucking bitch all the fucking time. Um, as I, he got worse as, as we were growing up and everything. And like, I would get like, I can't explain to you the level of white hot rage that would course through my veins And all I could do was just remove myself and go to my room and just try to like, you know, self-soothe my way out of it. So I think that also has a lot to do with why I have a hard time saying something because what I did my whole life when I had an issue was remove myself and talk through it in my own head, have a whole conversation. And then what, what, what did I do in high school? I just had to come back and eat dinner at some point, like... And they would act like nothing happened. Mm-hmm. So then it's like, mm-hmm. oh, well, you've got you've got banned on Friday. And then I would have to act like nothing happened. Like I hadn't just had a fucking insane, yes. like, like nuclear meltdown. Yes. And so for me, instead of now being able to, like, express that in a healthy way, I kept doing it. And at least I realized I do this. And I told my partner, like, you know, this is what you're dealing with. And I have a really hard time. And it still is a hard time because I don't know. I I just that is not natural to me being able to just say what's wrong because I'm afraid. I'm afraid I will say something or do something that I can't take back. Mm. I don't know what it looks like when I I take it back. I do know what it looks like when I absolutely I hit the trip and the, the actual nuclear power plant starts to melt down. I, I lose it. 
I lose it. I start screaming things. I look like a lunatic and I say things that are horrific and damaging. And then after it's all done, I'm like, oh, God, that was bad. That was bad. You just destroyed a whole city. <laughs> I've taken it. Yes. I'm like the Wanda. fucking Avenger. I'm, I'm Wanda. I am Wanda. That's my avatar on the Disney Plus app. But like, I do. I'm like, oh, dear. Well, we've killed people. <laughs> Whatever. You know? Everyone's like, I'm dead like, in the town, y'all. Sorry. Oops. Sorry. Oopsies. <laughs> I'm, I feel better now. Do I get to take it <laughs> out? <laughs> so that's just so interesting to me that like, right? We have s similar experiences. Mm -hmm. But you went one way and I went another. And it's just, I guess it's just who we are at our core. Like, who is our soul? Who do we, wh what does our soul that got implanted in this meat suit how does that person's that that being's experiences and and like other lifetimes of experience how does that manifest and like yeah. your own god-given personality that your brain and your mind uh who who that person is and i guess it all just depends on those factors too yeah. it's not all just oh childhood because right. everybody yeah. deals with stuff differently and yeah. uh processes it differently because like i never had any screaming matches with my mom because she would have punched me in the face um growing up but we also like i never got mad it was more so like disappointments or sadness where i would then channel that sadness into my blog that i would like write out my feelings and i think that's why sometimes i'm good at explaining my feelings and walking through what i'm feeling and that's why sometimes when abe and i have gotten into arguments and especially if i've had some drinks and he's like here we fucking go because i'm like hold on let me walk through why i feel this certain emotion and i'm really good at like taking and, and like shredding it apart and getting down to the root of it being like ah this is why I'm so upset right now. Mm. But when you try to do that when you're drunk, it always doesn't come out very well. It does not. Well. Because, <laughs> yeah, I like to think that it... Because I am better now. Like, I'm very... Again, going back to curiosity and, mm -hmm. like, empathetic. So, like, I try to use them on myself. And I'm like, why am I feeling this way? Mm -hmm. And I'll connect some dots. Um, but when you're drinking, man, all bets are off. All bets are off. Because, like, you... It seems logical, but the alcohol has numbed some logical parts of your brain. Yes. And it's just <laughs> bypassing that whole town of, you know, rationality. Uh, well, thank you all for a great productive conversation. And if anybody has had or ha has had experience with someone with a small penis, and if you ever oh, had yeah, to have to that, that conversation, full circle moment. Full circle, uh, small penises. Text hits and how you dealt with that situation to 96893 uh because i have a feeling that maybe if you dealt with that you, if you're watching this on facebook you don't want to put it on facebook for everybody or to see be YouTube. like <laughs> no be like oh my god amanda you're commenting on robert small dick from five years ago and he's in your profile photo oh uh, <laughs> yikes producer kelvin how can people follow you on social media you can follow me at Kelvin Live, TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. Holly? Radio Holly, TikTok, Twitter X, Threads, Instagram. There's a Holly O'Connor Facebook page. Mm -hmm. um, I also, on uh, the thing I sent Holly and producer Kelvin about uh, doing better if your engagement has been down, if this is important to you, one of the things that a uh, creator on Instagram said is that because, of course, Meta with Instagram, Threads, and Facebook, the more active you are on Threads, it'll actually help your Instagram algorithm mm -hmm. because they want you to use their product. So maybe it's time for you to get on Threads if having a robust, engaging Instagram is important to you. If not, well, we'll just go fuck ourselves. Uh, you can find me. And, and Meta can go fuck itself. Absolutely. Find me at Miguel Fuller Thanks. on all the different platforms. <laughs> We will see you all on Friday. Bye. Miguel and Holly uncensored. Catch it on the iHeart.